Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we are at the grounds of one of the oldest and largest hospitals in India. The Victoria Hospital. Now the foundation stone to this hospital was laid in 1897 by the Maharani of Mysore. Why? Well basically she wanted to commemorate the 60 years of Queen Victoria's ascension to the throne of England and this hospital was inaugurated in 1900 by the Maharaja of Mysore. Queen Victoria Hospital today is called as the Bangalore Medical College and Research Institute. Now although this hospital is about 122 years old, the stones that were used to build this hospital are much older because the stones came from another place the Bangalore Fort Sri Kempe Gora the first who is the founder and architect of modern Bangalore, built the original mud fort here in 1537. Now, who is he? He was a chieftain of the Vijayanagara Empire and he had his land holdings in the Yalanka region and he had a vision to build a new city, a new trading city for commerce and he took this plan to the king Achutaraya of the Vijayanagara Empire. King Achutaraya was so pleased with the plan of Sri Kempe Gauda that he not only gave the permission to build the fort and therefore build the city, he also gifted him 12 hoblis or revenue divisions and the revenue or, or the annual income from these hoblis were about 30,000 varhas, so that's gold coins. And it is with this capital that Kempe Gaula laid the foundation for his new city, the Bengaluru city, based from this fort, the Bengaluru fort. Now, on an auspicious day, Sri Kempe Gora got four pairs of white bulls and made the plough in four different directions, which formed the first two main streets of Bangalore. Uh, <clears throat> the one that ran east to west was called as Chikapete, and the one that ran from north to south was called as Dodapete. Pete means market, Chika is small, Dodda is big and the intersection or the junction where these two streets met is co was called as the Dodapete Square which forms a modern avenue road today. It is even said that uh, Sri Guru Nanak I, when he was coming back from uh, Sri Lanka, is said to have stopped at Bangalore and uh, Sri Kempe Gauda is supposed to have met him, sought his blessings and uh, Sri Guru Nanak has blessed Sri Kempe Gauda 
and the city of Bangalore. So I guess these blessings are still working on Bangalore and it's still prospering. Now this gate behind me is called as the Delhi Gate. But legend says that when the original fort was being built, the original mud fort, uh, when they were building the southern gate, uh, every morning when they come back, the gate would collapse. They would build it again. Next morning, the gate would collapse again. And uh, Sri Kempe Gowda consulted his astrologers and they said there is some sort of, you know, evil effect or whatever. And to negate that, a human sacrifice was needed. And not just a human sacrifice, a pregnant woman needed to be sacrificed. Now, of course, Kempe Gowda being the visionary that he is, flatly refused and said, no, 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 no <clears throat> sacrifice is going to happen under my rule. And that was that. Uh, but what happened is that uh, his daughter-in-law, uh, Lakshmi Devi, or Lakshmama as she was called, when she heard this, and then she saw her father-in-law's predicament. The uh, fort is not being completed, uh, so he can't go ahead with the city, and the sacrifice was necessary. So in the middle of the night, it is said that she went to the southern gate, and she beheaded herself. She was pregnant at this time. And she beheaded herself, and once she sacrificed herself, construction continued without any hiccups. A strange uh, incident, but uh, incident of valor, sacrifice of how the city was built. And subsequently, many markets were established. Markets for uh, gold, jewelry, textiles, cotton, bangles, grains. Hey, you get the idea. And the and uh, Bangalore developed and prospered under Sri Kempe Gowda until the eyes of other empires fell on this little town. This fort eventually fell into the hands of the Bijapur Sultanate and uh, Shaji, who is the father of Chhatrapati Shivaji, was a commander in the Bijapur Empire or the Sultanate and this fort was handed under his control and eventually the control of this fort fell to Shaji's son and half-brother of Chhatrapati Shivaji, Ekoji Bosle. Well, eventually the Mughals came calling and they were on the outskirts of the city and by this time Ekoji Shivaji decided that, uh, no, Ekoji Bosle, sorry, decided that he didn't want to lose the revenue or the money that he's getting from this uh, little kingdom that he's got. So he did a deal with the king of Mysore, the warriors of Mysore. Uh, and settled for an amount of 3 lakh rupees. Well, but by then the Mughals came, they put in the flag on this fort and said, okay, this belongs to us now. And uh, there's nothing that uh, Ekoji Bosle could do about it. But the Mughals did a deal with, okay, let me just show my face. Uh, the Mughals did a deal with uh, the Maharaja of Mysore and they said, okay, this fort belongs to us now. The original price that you decided was 3 lakh rupees to Ekoji Bosley. We will settle for the same amount. So this fort was sold by the Mughals to the Wadayars of Mysore for the same amount that it was originally agreed upon. And <clears throat> then it came under the control of the Mysore state and the Wadayars. And the Wadayars eventually handed over the fort to Hyder Ali, the father of Tipu Sultan as is Jagir or revenue land and it was under Hyder Ali that the original mud fort was built using stones and it was expanded, it was strengthened, uh, moats were built, ramparts were built. In fact the original uh, outer fort extended quite a bit uh, 
to Victoria Hospital, up to Kim's uh, Institute. So the fort was built, uh, like I said, under Hyder Ali, uh, made of stones, so, uh, uh, how we see it today. And later by a son, Tipu Sultan. And this was during the Anglo-Mysorean Wars, uh, by which time the British started coming. And they were attacking uh, various fortifications of, in southern India. It is at this point that the British broke into the fort and took control in, actually it was on, in March sometime in 1791. So this fort, the Bangalore fort, fell to the British in March of 1791 and in October the fort at Nandi Hills fell to Lord Cornwallis and that's how the British took control. This is Tipu Sultan's palace, just a stone's throw away from the Bangalore fort. And the construction of this palace was started by his father, Hyder Ali, in 1781 and completed in 1791 by Tipu Sultan. This palace is the king of Tipu Sultan's summer palace. It has been completed by the king 1791. 230 year old this palace. His father was Hyder Ali, started the foundation 1781, but Hyder Ali died in 1782. It will take a 10 years to construction this palace. <coughs> One thing, uh, first I will clarify you, he was not a king, he is a commander. This is Mysore state, Mysore was the capital, Wadiyars are the king of Mysore. Hyder Ali been appointed as the army commander, given this Bangalore, this rural part to control to Hyder Ali. And his son, Tipu Sultan, under the control of father. Both are here in summer vacation. And Bangalore weather is very good weather. You want to control the state from the Bangalore. In other remaining on the capital, Sriranga Patana is continuing. That's why it's called Summer Palace. We will not take the rest here in Bangalore. This is only for the administrative purpose. This is like a Darbar Hall. Darbar means to assembly. This is like a meeting hall. This is like a court. He gives his judgment. Punishment, it is down on the fort. It is part of jail also. Punishment there in the fort, the criminals. These are some of the jails that were built in this fort. And these jails, they were on three different types of jails. So this was for not so criminal of the offenders. So they were kept in this area. And this little nook that you see over here is the kitchen. So the prisoners at that time were actually given rations and they were asked to cook their own food, which I guess is better than prison food any time. So not too bad. Mr. Manjunath was actually quick uh, telling me about the Mysorean rockets and an example of which was inside. I wasn't allowed to film, but I think I just got a glimpse of it. I'll try and uh, add that uh, picture. Government of India, like Angar. So it is a rocket, real rocket, like a missile. So what the Mysorean rocket was basically a long cylinder of about eight inches in length, and it would be filled with gunpowder of about a pound or half a kilo and on one end they would attach a bamboo shaft of about four feet now this would give it stability when it is flying uh, similar to the Diwali rockets that we have now uh, well here's a twist on the other end they would attach a blade and when ignited the Mysorean rocket could travel up to a kilometer in length now imagine hundreds of these rockets flying at you and because of the weight of the blade uh, towards the end of the trajectory they would start spinning around. So what is the connection between the Mysorean rocket or Mysore with the Americans winning World War II at Normandy on D-Day?
This is a Bangalore torpedo, a thin metal tube packed with TNT, invented by the British many years ago at the Bangalore Cantonment in India. It was used in the last war, and it's being used today wherever men are fighting. 